Hello everybody, welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is Season 1, Episode 28. And as you guys remember, since last week, so if you actually enjoyed this segment and you want to learn more about it, just remember, I actually started doing um, these sessions more about financial education, real estate investing strategies, and strategy planning sessions like the one we did yesterday, starting episode 21. So if you do want to go back and you want to just focus on this portion, season one, episode 21 is where you want to get started. And that's really based on a lot of the feedback, the interactions, and questions that I've been getting from all of you over well, over the last couple of months, because I actually started doing this since June 1st as well. So I appreciate all the feedback and all the engagement that you're giving me, especially when you like my content and you're sharing this with people. So I really, really do appreciate it. Now, quickly getting into it, and you can see that I sort of left this from yesterday up here, simply because I've got a lot of messages from you guys about this. And the common question that we always get is that, oh my God, Tim, that seems so simple. It actually really is. And the whole point of me wanting to really share this with you uh, yesterday, and as I mentioned, sort of as an opening line, is the fact that, you know what, very much like a lot of people, and I can totally relate because my journey really isn't that different from your journey. All I did was really following the footsteps of other people that have done it before me. However, the whole point is, it's one thing to really understand it intellectually. It's another one to actually connect the dots for yourselves as well. The reason why I really wanted to share this with you, with you yesterday is simply because of the fact that this was when my dots got connected, was the fact that, oh my God, honestly though, if I can have a plan, if I have a goal and I can map out a plan and I can get there and that's all I gotta do. It really isn't that hard. However, that's the whole idea between things that are simple to understand versus easy to implement and execute. And I think a lot of the times in our heads, simple and easy are the exact same thing. And as my mentor used to say, well, you know what? For a lot of people, if you want to gain or lose quality weight, the concept is also very simple. Number one, you gotta get more exercises in. And number two, you got to control your diet and have a healthy diet. Just those two things, really. However, at the same time, those things are simple to understand intellectually. However, is it easy to execute and implement? And having this, uh, being able to stay consistent on implementing those. Not so much. And this is where, again, mentors and coaches come in to really help you out. And a lot of you guys know, even though I'm training and coaching other people now, and I've been doing that for years, I constantly make sure that I have my mentors and my coaches in various areas of my life to make sure that I continuously grow and move forward in my entire life. And so today's video, honestly, though, as you guys probably can see in the title, I named it three things that wealthy or rich people do and have. I would really wanted to make something that's a bit more, I mean, at first it was quite philosophical and then I realized that, you know what, I think it feel, it seems like everybody just wants the meats and potatoes and it's great. And so I'm going to build all those in just because a lot of the times really it is a full meal deal. When you're missing one ingredient, it's like cooking. It might not taste the same. The outcome, the result might actually not come out the way you want it. And so sort of piggybacking on what we did yesterday, because now you can see how easy it could be if you got support, if you got help. Because for me, honestly, I had my financial goal 10 years ago when I first started embarking on leveraging real estate investing as my vehicle to create my monthly income plus building long-term wealth. And all I needed to do was really to pick the strategies that would actually get me there in the time frame that I want to achieve them. So it sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? It kind of comes down to having a smart goal too. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. The whole point is a lot of people, they're out there, especially when it comes to real estate, there's so much marketing out there, so much, so much noise out there. And it's hard to cut through it because again, I can relate to all of that because I actually took on trainings. And when I did the trainings, I decided that I want, I wanted to learn about Wholesale. I want to learn about negotiations, apartment building buying, and I want to learn about lease options. I want to learn about creative financing. I want to learn about commercial spaces. And 
even just within all of that, it kind of blows up, right? Like each category has so many different nuances and different maneuvers and you got to learn and understand. And it became very, very overwhelming. And so what I decided to do, as you guys know, was that I started out with what I called my baby strategy, which was lease options. And that sort of paved the road because we truly, truly do believe, especially when you have, well, when you need to actually play with OPM. And really at the end of the day, everybody needs to have access to other people's money because it doesn't matter if you're born rich, born wealthy it, in this industry, it's real estate. You're always going to hit a ceiling if you want to grow, if you want to scale. And so piggybacking on this, I'm just going to go into a bit more of a theory with you just so that to really make that point very clear for everybody. So th these are the three things that, well, based on my observations and based on my learnings and studies and research over the last it's not just in the last 10 years anymore because obviously I was inspired prior to that would be these main three main things. So number one, and I actually made a video about it a few days ago as well is clarity. Okay. So by clarity, what I really mean is, well, rich people, wealthy people, they know they want to get rich. They want to become wealthy. And they have to be very clear about that. And you have to declare it, first of all, to yourself. There's no shame in admitting that because we are huge fans of the concept that, you know what, you need, you need to create a sustainable business model so that you can sustain the message. You can sustain the message. You can continue to go out there and help out as many people as possible. It helps you scale. It helps you have better, better equipment, uh, better materials, can recruit better trainers, better quality people. And, you know, maybe even just elevating the overall quality of what we can do here. Hey, Harp. Good to have you join us. Where are you today, by the way? You're usually in the UK these days, aren't you? So thanks for joining me. Now, clarity really at the end of the day is goal. It's really having those clear goals that you want to hit. And if you go back to the video yesterday, you will know. All it comes down to is think about what it is that you want money to do for you. And again, not to be crass, Put a price tag next to everything. If you want a better living environment in a better neighborhood, well, that basically means a, probably a nicer house in a nicer neighborhood. That comes with a price tag. If you want to send your kids to a better quality, uh, for better quality education, even though these days mostly, most of it is done online. Doesn't matter. Same idea. That's what I thought, Harp. You're still in the UK. Uh, I miss flying. I don't know about you, right? It's been hard. It's been a bit of a tough adjustment. So, having that clear goal, right? Maybe you want a nicer vehicle. Maybe you want to get healthier and have better diet, which means you might want to eat a little bit better and quality produce and groceries tend to cost a little bit more too. And maybe instead of flying economy or being subscribed to a bunch of budget travel sites, just so that when a good deal comes along, you have to basically try to see if you can get time off work, get permissions off work from your boss, and if you have the money to, to, to actually do it. Instead of that, why don't you plan the vacation that you really want for yourself and for your family or for your loved ones, period. So again, it just really be clear about that picture of what you want and then distill that down to a monetary goal. Because again, I understand a lot of people are learning about how to elevate their financial wellness because they need, they need the access to financial abundance to help them achieve what they want to achieve, to realize the visions that they have created for themselves. So clarity and goals, very, very important. Number two, okay, the second thing that rich and wealthy people do and have is to have strategies. Okay. Just having those visions, knowing what you want is not enough anymore because you need to be able to find ways to get there. Okay. So once again, if you wanted to lose weight or gain weight, and what I mean is lose quality weight or gain quality weight. And uh, a lot of you guys know that I've had sort of the, I guess, 
a, the, 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 the opposite problem compared to most people because of all my autoimmune disorders. I carry a lot of visceral fat. However, it's not, it doesn't really show when people look at me. The other side of that is that I actually maintain my exercise level to hold my weight. And it's very difficult for me to actually gain quality weight because my body's constantly attacking itself, even though I'm on medication. And so I work really, really hard to maintain my health. And, um, However, the strategies behind that, once again, is diet and exercise. And so eat better, learn more about nutrition. And that means you need to have a plan in terms of how you want to tackle this, especially when it comes to your financial future. Okay, so there was a book that I was highly inspired by, and it was called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about the fact that usually after we graduate from school, our financial statement becomes our report card. And however, that becomes a report card that nobody vets or screens or critiques on or evaluates you on. You gotta be that person that holds yourself accountable because again, nobody cares more about your money and your financial future more than you do at the end of the day. And that is the ugly truth that we all have to face. So wake up and start getting some clarity and set some goals so that we can help you put in the strategies, okay? And by strategies, basically, it's about just having a plan. It's kind of like, hey, if you want to go someplace that you've never been to, most cars these days now have a GPS. And if not, most people have a smartphone and you have Google Maps, you have Apple Maps or whatever maps that you use. You basically punch it in. The destination is that goal. And then you punch it in and then you will get the path to get there. And we always say that, hey, you know what? A business that fails to plan, plans to fail. And so many people, once they get into the workforce, they forget to plan about what they actually really want, financially especially. So keep that in mind. And this is really what we've learned throughout the last, I'm gonna say 18 years, almost two decades now, just from observing and learning from our wealthiest friends and other role models out there and the industry giants that are really setting the standards and setting the bars for us to learn from. And the third and last thing on my list is that successful and rich people, they don't go at things alone. I'm gonna add an S right here because depending on what you do and how many markets you do it in and what kind of strategies you pick to help you get there. Because one of the sayings that I really, really do believe in is if you wanna go fast, go alone. Especially if you're driven and smart and intelligent and you pick up things fast and you're not afraid to work hard, great. So if you wanna go fast, go alone. My personal belief after all these years is that everything that I want to do and accomplish in life, I want to build in longevity. Why? Because of all the health challenges that I've had. And some of you guys already know the five core values that I live by, and they happen to also be Trust Your Talents core values as a business, as a company, as, and forget about all those things. As core values that bring all the coaches together is number one, health. Number two, sustainability. Number three, joy. Number four, fulfillment. And number five, impact. And so those are the values that really, really speak to me. And the idea behind all of this is the fact that I truly do believe that if you want to go far and have a sustainability built in into anything that you work so hard for, so hard building up, that's what you got to have. And so again, what that really comes down to is having teams, having support. Okay. In the business sense, you guys all hear about OPM, OPT. So other people's money, other people's time, other people's knowledge, other people's expertise. It's about having those support around you, having the teams around you, because we also fundamentally believe that if you walk into a room and you are the smartest guy in that room, you're definitely in the wrong room. Drop your freaking ego if you want to be successful in life. Okay. So these are the three things that I really wanted to share with all of you today, just because of the feedback that I got from you yesterday, because 
some of you are going, oh my God, Tim, that is so simple. And it's so clear in terms of what I can do and what I need to do to reach the financial goals. Because it's not about being a jack of all trades. Again, you're learning how to invest. And a lot of you are going to be investing with other people's money. It is your responsibility and your duty to protect other people's hard earned money as well as yours. So be very clear about it and have clear goals, have a plan. And if you need help, reach out to people that you know have gone where you've been to, for help and get plugged in to a community, to support teams so that you can keep building this. And the one thing that we really love about what we're teaching people, it's not just about real estate investing strategy because strategy, the way we look at it is really building business systems and building businesses that will last for a lifetime. Meaning even if you are no longer on this planet, you can pass it down to somebody and they can continue to reap the benefits of your hard work. And that's what this is truly about. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. It is season one, episode 28. And as you know, every single day from Monday to Friday during the week, I will be coming to you Facebook Live at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you like the content, please like, comment, let me know what else you want to see. On Monday, I think I actually shared quite a bit of a list with you guys in terms of what, what I'm going to be covering because they are all based on your feedback and your questions so far. So let me know what you want to see, what you want to hear. Um, this is what I'm here for. So every single day during the week, I'm going to be coming to you for just about 15, 20 minutes and hopefully to add some value in your life. So have a great evening, everybody, and live well. See you tomorrow.